Mr. Rector, magnificus, professors, promoters, examining committee, staff, and fellow students. This afternoon, I defend my thesis on economic restructuring and value changes, the search for regional competitiveness in Colombia. I chose the Colombian policy of competitiveness with a specific focus on the policy of agreements on competitiveness because in my capacity as director of the Regional Observatory of Employment and Human Resources of Tolima, during the period of 1998-2003, I found the policy interesting, but it needed further developments in terms of policy instruments. At the same time, I thought that there was a need to document this important competitiveness policy in academic terms. First, I will give a contextual background of the policy, then explain the objectives of the research the research question, the analytical framework, and the methodology used in my research. Finally, I will present the findings of the research. In view of the increasing international competitiveness, competitive pressure at the, onset, at the onset of the 1990s, the Colombian government adopted a national policy for productivity and competitiveness. It began with the structural reforms namely labor, fiscal, financial, privatization, and privatization. And since the second half of the 1990s, it has focused its sectoral policies and its competitiveness policy in general on value chain schemes and includes public-private initiatives for competitiveness. Uh, competitiveness alignment, both at the national and local regional levels. The changing nature of the industrial policy the endogenous development needs and the devastating outcomes of the economic restructuring in several regions and key sectors such as agriculture and livestock prompted the country to undertake an aggressive program of value chain-based development policies and partnerships including in decentralization to the regions. The National Policy for Productivity and Competitiveness was issued in 1999-95 during the period of 1996-2004, approximately 60 agreements, around half of them, were signed at the regional level. The competitiveness policy of Colombia is a pioneer case in Latin America of a decentralized implementation to sector and region of a national competitiveness policy. It is highly innovative, yet its policy process effectiveness has not been studied. Has not been studied. The research has attempted to fill this lacuna and advance the understanding of the process effectiveness of peso level policies conducted at the local regional value chain level. It is important to point out that the variety of ways in which the policy of competitiveness agreement was developed across the country allowed a variety of cases of case studies to test the relationship between value chain and territory. The policy of competitiveness agreement is multi-level and expands to sector and region. This scheme draws on several value chain stakeholders like business, agriculture and livestock producers, their associations, universities, the government and others to work in different types of partnerships with the purpose of improving the productivity of firms and farms and the overall competitiveness, competitive position amidst the process of internalization of the Colombian economy. The coordination of the competitiveness agreement is done by the national and regional councils for competitiveness, which embody a modality of public-private partnerships <coughs> to promote value chain development. Through the competitiveness agreement, competitiveness challenges, threats and opportunities which represent a diagnosis, diagnosis of the value chain are identified. A vision for the future development of the chain is defined, and responses are discussed and agreed upon. Finally, a strategic plan of action is concerted and condensed in a matrix of commitments. Having presented the contextual background, the objectives of the research are to analyze the effectiveness of the decentralized implementation of the Colombian National Competitiveness Policy during the period 1996-2004. To, 
To evaluate the developmental outcomes of meso-level interventions carried out in the local regional value chains. And finally, to analyze the influence of value chain and regional factors on the development outcomes of value chain level interventions. The key research questions are, which have been the main components of the Colombian national policy for competitiveness and productivity, and how have they been articulated and decentralized to the regions? Second, what have been the outcomes of agreements of competitiveness of value chains at the regional level during the period 1998 to 2004, and what lessons can be drawn from this? Third, to what extent different economic structures and governance configurations of the value chains influence the outcomes of competitiveness agreements? And fourth, to what extent local regional characteristics influence the outcome of the competitiveness agreements? The theoretical framework entails three main contributing perspectives. First, the global commodity chain from Gehrke, Kaplinsky, and others. Second, the global productive networks literature from Henderson, Hayes, Hoy, Deacon, and Blair. And third, the regional business system literature by Richard Whitley. The research developed an analytical framework of value chain policies, particularly the process effectiveness of multi-stakeholder multi development partnerships at the value chain level. It is composed of four main elements, value chain factors, regional characteristics, competitiveness agreement of for value chains, and policy process effectiveness of competitiveness agreements. For the methodological design, the research strategy is based on a comparative case study of value chains in different regions of Colombia including the competitiveness agreement signed during the period from 1998 to 2003. It's important to point out that the study deals with comparisons of case studies instead of comparisons of set of variables. The following types of comparisons are established. First, the same chain with agreement in one region and same value chain with agreement in another region. The purpose of comparison is to find out to what extent the local regional characteristics influence the outcome of the agreements on competitiveness. Second, different value chains with agreement on competitiveness in the same region, and the purpose of comparison is to find out what is the influence of different economic structures and governance configurations on the chains of the chains on value chain meso level interventions at the local regional level. How explain the contextual background, details of the research and methodology used? I will now focus on the findings categorized as empirical findings and theoretical contributions. The main empirical findings begin with the quality of an agreement of competitiveness. It is concluded that the likelihood of having a highly relevant competitiveness agreement of value chain at the level of the region increases with the policy process effectiveness. Hence, in terms of quality, an outstanding competitiveness agreement has both high relevance and policy process effectiveness. That is, a competitiveness agreement which fulfills the goal of the key stakeholders involved in the competitiveness agreement and consolidates the coordinating capacities of the value chain. The outcomes of the competitiveness agreement should constitute a positive contribution to the attainment of the competitiveness goals established. This led to the development outcomes of value chain agreements for competitiveness in three areas. First, aggregating opportunities. The value chain competitiveness agreements contributed positively to process upgrading in the agro and livestock links. There were outstanding gains in productivity. Greater, pro greater productivity gains appear in the daily value chain. For example, during the period 2001 and 2004, there was a modernization process of the livestock and daily processing meat in areas such as cleaning production practices, improvement in, of infrastructure for meat collecting and commercialization, and increase in the availability of cooling tanks at the level of the, of the farm, both individual and collective. The value chain competitiveness agreement have contributed to product upgrading in the agro and the agro links of the value chain cocoa chocolate, daily products, and cattle textile clothing. However, in price stretching, it has very limited. It was very limited. The official certification of institutional plant, plant 
this one at plant nurseries and cloning gardens increase the availability of certified genetic materials. In the daily products value chain, there has been a positive improvement in raw milk quality in terms of the solids and proteins, which constitute a positive response to the new specific demands of the industry. Second, value chain integration. The different value chains provide examples of improvements in value chain integration because of the value chain agreements of competitiveness. A third, collective le a third a outcome, collective learning. The policy of competitiveness agreements for value chains and its key operating instrument, the National and Regional Council for Competitiveness of the Value Chains, facilitated, facilitated the collective learning among key stakeholders of the value chain, including support institutions, public agencies, NGOs, and others. Having presented the outcomes of the value chain competitiveness agreement, I will now discuss the influence of value chain factors on the developmental outcomes of multi-stakeholder multi development partnerships at the level of value chain. First, the quality of the agreements can also be explained in terms of the role played by the value chain factors in the development of the competitive agreement. First of all, the value chain factors, in particular governance, are determinant in the quality of the agreement. In captive value chains, the dominant market power of the largest industrial firms allows them to position the agenda in the discussion and signing of a competitiveness agreement. Hence, the main interests of the value chain governance prevail over those of the small agro and livestock producers in the development of a competitiveness agreement. Issues are agreed upon and that comes are finally reached depending on the lead firm's competitiveness objectives. They support or block initiatives and introduce standards, quality and processes to participate in the value chain according to their own goals. In this process, the less competitive agro livestock, the less competitive agro livestock producers are excluded from the upgrading process. Other than value chain factors, regional characteristics can influence the design, implementation, and development outcomes of the value chain competitiveness agreements. The regional characteristics also contribute to the explanation of the quality of the competitiveness agreement. The differences, the differences in the key attributes of the regional business systems where the value chains are embedded are reflected in the quality of the agreements. The chance to have an outstanding or good quality competitiveness agreement are there if the regional business system has a strong regional government and its development trajectory has consolidated the culture of public partnerships for development. A solid financial scheme to support the economic activity of the different regional sectors, plus an education and training system that provides a qualified human resource to cater to the demands of the regional firms. On the contrary, if the regional business system lacks the above attributes, then it generates additional entry barriers to the competitiveness agreement to those created by the leading firms to enhance their capacities for the appropriation of rents. Other regional factors that influence the developmental outcomes of the value chain competitiveness agreements are the dynamics of regional leadership, natural resources, and the role of typical Colombian variables such as armed conflict and illicit crops. Lastly, the nature of the interaction between value chain and regional characteristics finally determines the scope and developmental outcomes of value chain level action at the regional level. As the case studies demonstrate, the relationship between region and sector value chain has different configurations which affect the policy process effectiveness and developmental outcomes of policy networks of the type constituted in the context of competitiveness agreements at the level of value chain. And an awareness of this relationship supports the design of tailor-made policies that enhance the effectiveness of interventions at the level of value chain. This represents one important lesson learned which has policy implications for value chain development policy <coughs> in developing countries. Based on its empirical findings, the research has made theoretical contribution to the global value chain and industrial policy integration. The main findings and lessons derived from this study would enhance the available theoretical body of value chain, value chain and industrial policy literature and promote a shift towards local real studies in the value chain domain. 
First, first of the case study involves a scaling down of the global value chain analytical framework to the analysis of local regional value chain based development policies. In fact, the study did not carry out conventional research on global value chain analysis, focused on the wider and complex global context, as it is with most of the cases documented by global value chain researchers. On the contrary, it adapted this framework to national regional levels by taking into account the complexities of the functioning of a national agro-industrial value chain and its regional nuclei where it is embedded. Second, Second findings show that value chains actors, value chain factors are more influential than the regional factors in the implementation and developmental outcomes of value chain based development policies. Even when the regional policy environment is favorable to improve the conditions of local producers and when a competitiveness agreement of a value chain has been implemented, the governance and economic structure of the value chain can prevent that such goal is achieved. This research developed an innovative approach to the analysis of regional issues in the study of value chain based development policies. It put forward a more comprehensive approach in value chain research than those applied by Bayern Board, Bank Health Board, comparing different value chains in different regions, and the yes, comparing different value chains in different countries, and with Monroe and Helsinki comparing the same value chain in different countries. The importance of the methodological contribution of the present study stands on the fact that two types of analysis are incorporated. First, we compare the same value chain in two different regions, and then we compare two different value chains in the same region. In other words, the value chain factors remain constant, same value chain, and compare two different regions to study the influence of regional factors in the developmental outcomes of value chain based development policies. Second, the regional factors remain constant, same territory, and compare two different value chains to discover the contribution of influence of value chain factors in the process effectiveness of value chain policies against of competitiveness. Third, the thesis supports the view that the effectiveness of an agreement of competitiveness at the level of value chain is enhanced by the presence of a leading firm and or an entrepreneur capable of organizing collective action, mobilizing public action, and whose interventions promote the integration and the systemic efficiency of the value chain. Fourth, the inclusion of non-economic factors such as violence and illicit crops cultivation and of country region specific contextual characteristics in the study of value chain based development strategies. The policy implication of this contribution is that the value chain competitiveness agreement is an effective tool to promote peace and prosperity in conflicted regions. Finally, it is important to point out that since the focus of value chain analysis framework has been gradually moving toward the study of regional issues, this research contributes to move this endeavor one step forward by studying the influence of value chain level and regional level factors on the degree to which meso-level actions are formulated and implemented and on the likely outcomes. Thereby, we expect to pave the way for the new way studies in this field, which fortunately constitutes